we are dealing with how does a man, we're dealing with male, this is man power, man glory, man dominion. How does a man, how does a man step into the prophetic as a male and how do you walk in the prophetic giftings of the Holy Ghost. Now, in the Word of God, we see that Elisha was imparted the prophetic by um, Elijah, because we see God saying, go anoint him in your place, which means to tutor him, train him, tell him how it operates, tell him how to see. Tell him how to hear. Train him of how to discern my signals, my ways, my requests. How to disconnect from people. How to be focused. One of the major things that happens when one becomes prophetic is that they become angry with distractions. They become angry with unfinished tasks. If you take a notes, write this down. As a man of God, you'll need to know this. When you become prophetic, you'll become angry at distractions and unfinished tasks, things that are left undone in you, whether it be your goal for your weight, whether it be the goal for your mind, the goal for your studying. And as men of God, you have to be careful that you don't miss moments where God wants to have you study because then you'll, you'll play catch up which is very dangerous. When a man plays catch up, here's the scary thing about a man playing catch up. When you play catch up with a spiritual schedule, you already done missed the moment. So when you play catch up, you're going to end up trying to fulfill that moment at the wrong time. So if God wanted you to study the word at a certain time and you missed it, now you're going to be trying to study the word when you're supposed to go to sleep. Now you're going to be trying to study the word when it's time for you to go take a shower. Now you're, now you're going to be trying to study the word when it's time to do something physically with anybody that you're assigned. You're, you're going to be trying to be at your work. You're missing work assignments because you're trying to uh, do something spiritually that God wanted you to do. Um, you also have to navigate with this. Don't pray in tongues. Um, and override the work assignments that you have because you're trying to pray in tongues. There's a time for you to pray in tongues verbally, outwardly. You don't want to, it to affect uh, places that God pitch you because you, you're doing something out of timing, out of timing. You could do something divine out of timing and mess yourself up. Now, people are looking at you like you're crazy because you're really not in a place where you should be praying in the Holy Ghost verbally where everybody could see you. Even in the word of God, the Lord was telling the people, when you pray, go in your closet. There's a reason why he's saying that, because it wasn't for the eyes of people to see you praying. As a man of God, the more prophetic you become, you not only have knowledge of what you could do in the spirit, your spiritual weapons, but you start understanding when to utilize them. When is an inappropriate time? Like when you have your wife while you're sleeping with her and you are making a baby, you're not going to break out and go to Bakita. <laughs> You're not going to break out of no tongues because the timing is wrong. <laughs> the timing is wrong for you to break out into a prayer meeting. It's not time for you to break out. <laughs> And, and it's going to affect the woman. She's going to want to know if you saw an angel, <laughs> if you saw the Lord, if you're on your way to glory. Is, is this your last seconds on earth? Huh? Is, is, is you checking out? Did you see some chariots? Huh? Huh? 
Is she no longer the chariot? Did you see some chariots? <laughs> Did the chariot system switch? Has, has some things been subject to change in, in one moment? Do you want, want to know? What? Did you see a demon? What? Did you did you see the spirits I got that torment me in the day, Daddy? <laughs> did you see them spirits that was bothering me today? Did, 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 about two of them had hopped up off me. Told me that you don't love me no more. That's what they told me. They told me that you was leaving me. They told me that you was leaving me for a sea creature, a lizard. They told me, they told me that you was going to leave me for Godzilla. Shezilla, Shezilla, Shezilla. You leaving me for Shezilla? Did you see the demons that torment me? Uh, did you see the demon? So the point is that as a man of God, you're going to have abilities that are spirit that you have to know the right time to use them. Let me give you another example. There's a time where you may be praying in tongues and now the tongues is interpreted that you must go do something. And now you're going to do it, but now you're saying, I need to keep on praying in tongues. I need to keep on praying in tongues. Did you know that there's a realm in praying in tongues? Listen to me, man of God. There's a realm of praying in tongues that actually makes you confused. Because you're no longer doing it by faith. You're no longer doing it by divine timing. You're no longer doing it by the leading of the spirit. Could you know that you could pray in tongues and not be in the spirit? <whistles> now you're in the flesh because the tongues that you were supposed to release already done release you into an activity. Now it's time for you to do. Um, so, so the, you are a bang de glon shanaginish and evians at Kuvi and Seniga Nahanje legenjo no sanange tele corista stange stelesh to musti ashalahaze. And you are in tongues. Now, the tongues is interpreted go take a taxi cab to the store, get you some milk, drink some milk, warm your milk. Um, I'm just giving you something random, is it? You know, I'm just giving you something random. Go take a nap, wake up, and then I'll tell you what to do from there. So you, 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 you go, you see a taxi cab, you get inside the taxi cab, and you karadangi di gashana kostoro sonunga dileke jonzi boba bia bobo be bele bobon di agadegi di ongo duga di gi anjokono anze kinosti ki valakanos. And you and the taxi cab driver look back at you and say, are you okay? And you look at the taxi cab driver. Take it, 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 take you tell the taxi cab driver you're not leaving. I'm not leaving. Tele la casana. The cops are outside with mace and guns pointed, telling you, could you please leave the car? You looking at the cops. Katakotuna Kasono Costere. Now here you are praying in tongues, and you're in the flesh. You are praying in tongues demonically because now you're not even in the spirit leading you. You done left the leading of the spirit in tongues. Now you're in the flesh. So as a man of God, you have to recognize this. There's a time to do spiritual things. There's a time to use your spiritual weapons publicly where people could see, or, or, or publicly rather, uh, uh, in a public setting. Probably, probably, depending on the situation. But there's another realm where you have understanding and to know I'm not supposed to do something publicly. I'm supposed to shut up. I'm supposed to be quiet. I'm supposed to act like I'm normal, like everybody else. I'm supposed to blend in with the crowd. When you 
When you are prophetic, you'll recognize that I'm not supposed to always let myself be seen. That's why the Lord was telling people to stop telling about the miracle he did for them. Do you think that the people that went go tell about the miracle that Jesus did for them? Do you believe that they were prophetic? No, they were not. They were not prophetic people because they should not have said what Jesus did not want exposed. They should have kept confidentiality. So when they went to other people, they thought they was doing something that was giving glory to God. They was not. That shows you that there is realms where you could do something that seemeth spiritual and you're angering God. You're not supposed to be doing it. You're not supposed to be doing it. And you are doing something that's grieving God, is angering him, is not making him happy. Those people affected Jesus because as a man of God, he was not supposed to be known in certain places. It made it hard for him to go in and go out without paparazzi, without all lies on me, without people all in his face. I've rebuked people like that before. Because when people get around you, they want to impress you. They want to tell everybody, hey, you know this prophet, Je shut the hell up. Shut, sh shut it up, Cletus. Shut up. Shut up. You, shut up. Shut it up. Shut it up. Don't, don't try to talk about no Jesus when we get around. Shut up. When people are untrained, <laughs> they do evil in the name of God because that's not what God want to do. Like I told you, if I'm moving, and Juan sees somebody crying and he goes up to them and say, you know, the Lord going to help you. You know, the Lord going to bless you. You know, the Lord going to lift you up. I won't bring Juan with me another day. I won't bring Juan with me another day because Juan's righteousness should be looking at how I respond to the person. If I don't say nothing, Juan shouldn't have no words. If Juan has words, then Juan is not in the spirit. <laughs> if he wants to know how to respond to this, it's the same way. The, um, was it the Seraphonician woman? It was a certain type of woman. She comes up to Jesus, crying out to Jesus, and the Bible said Jesus don't say a word. And then when he, so imagine, then he finally spoke later on, but because she had faith. That means that you can provoke Jesus to talk if you got faith. But imagine Jesus never talks. And then Peter comes up to her and says, you know, the Lord going to help you. You know, the Lord going to bless you. You know, the Lord going to make a way for you. Whatever you believe in God for is already done. Peter, look at Jesus. Jesus ain't saying nothing. Jesus not saying nothing. So everything that you just said, it sounds so good. But you're a witch. You're a warlock. You just cursed this woman's life because you just gave her a word that's not the word of the Lord. So as men of God, you have to hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness. Remember, John the Baptist is a man of God. Jesus is the God of all men. But he, he houses himself as the man of God. And he talks and tells the man of God, do this, that righteousness may be fulfilled. But the man of God is saying, no, I'm not worthy to do this. And so there has to be some confidence when God calls you as a man to know who you are. If you know who you are as a man of God, you will not sin. Because when you know who you are, you'll understand that sin has nothing to do with who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let, let me go a little further on this. How to move into the prophetic gifting. You must have spurts in your day of meditation. You must think deep. While you think deep, God will visit you. And this is so amazing. When a man of God thinks deep, God will visit you. You notice I use the word visit because you decide whether or not the spirit can inhabit your thinking of deep, your deep thinking. Because there's people that they go into deep thinking and while they're in the deep, demons are also waiting to intercept their route in the deep 
and demons come and start speaking to them. Just think about this. Korah was in the deep. But while Korah is in the deep, demons of witchcraft tell him that Moses is the deceiver and he been set to set free the children of Israel. He's thinking in the deep, but the demons are now intercepting the deep. God will visit you while you're in the deep. While Korah was in the deep, God was showing Korah how to worship Moses, how to honor Moses. Remember the word of God saying in Exodus 7, 1, that you shall be a God. Yeah, he said to Pharaoh and to Aaron, but think about it. Okay, Korah, you underneath Aaron. So if, if, if you underneath Aaron and Aaron is worshiping Moses, you will hop in and worship Moses even better. So the thinking of deep for Korah, it went left because when God sees you thinking deep, he's going to visit you. If you don't want righteousness, if you don't want the way of God, demons are going to intercept that thinking of deep. So Judas is thinking deep. While he's thinking deep, Satan could get Judas to think about betraying Jesus because the thinking of deep, he's not going to desire righteousness. Judas is not thinking, I want to please and impress the Lord. I want to I want to show him how grateful I am for all that he has done for me, picking me, choosing me, making me a disciple, giving me favor, giving me access. Judas is not going to think like that. So while Judas is thinking deep, Satan meets Judas in that thinking of deep. And Satan picks Judas to fulfill what he wants to fulfill against Jesus. Now, Judas could think deep and enter into his deliverance because the Holy Spirit will show him, you need to stop taking the money out of Jesus' bag. You need to stop thinking you're in competition with you. You need to stop judging what Jesus has been teaching. You need to stop looking at how you could give information that Jesus told you to other people. And he could choose to let that realm go, but he doesn't. So as a man of God, you must have portals in your day where you think deep. You think over things. Reevaluate your work in the day. And the Holy Spirit will show you if you miss the mark. When the Holy Spirit show you that you missed the mark, you don't condemn yourself. You just blend yourself. You don't condemn yourself. You just descend yourself. You blend yourself. That means that you blend yourself. You mix yourself back into the word of God. Get the word of God back into your mix. Get back into the mix of the word of God. And then you descend yourself. Remember what John the Baptist said, I must decrease for him to increase.